Welcome to Life on Maui. I'm Stephen Freed. Today is our 15th show, and we're very proud. We get wonderful feedback from the community, and we're going to have a special format today for our 15th show that we'll have from time to time. We're calling it Life on Maui Dialogues. And I'm going to step out of the role of host, and I'm going to be co-hosting with my dear friend, Harold Hari Bloomfield. And our topic for today is something that is going to be controversial, for sure. We welcome your feedback. And the subject for today is going to be the goddess culture on Maui. All right. Well, first of all, hi, Steve. Hey, hi. Mwah. Mwah. I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to be invited back on your show, and certainly uh, uh, any uh, male on Maui uh, is familiar, perhaps uh, all too familiar, with the uh, goddess culture on Maui. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, uh, we want to honor the positive aspect in that, you know, we're uh, moving out of, thank goodness, the era of male chauvinism where you know the man was the king of his castle and uh, the woman uh, was in a subservient uh, role exclusively perhaps mm -hmm. and where we are thank goodness learning to honor uh, the woman more however however uh, the goddess culture is such that uh, it brings out uh, the desire, I would say, by most women of you know, wanting to be treated like uh, the goddess, like the princess uh, that they are. But there's truly a failure to continue to treat the man as the prince. Uh -huh. uh, God is somehow uh, left out of uh, the goddess culture. Mm -hmm. And where the man is uh, all too much expected to be now in the subservient role uh, to do the goddesses, uh, they would deny this, but, but oh. almost, exclusive, almost exclusive bidding. Yeah, well, I, I have a great example of that. All right. I have a great example of that. Recently, I got invited to a goddess gathering on the haiku side of the island. And what was amazing to me is that the men were charged a fee to come and serve and pamper the women. There were pampering stations and you pampered each woman. To me that's out of balance. To me what is needed is reciprocity. What's needed is a give and a take. I think that if this shoe was on the other foot that we would be called pigs, that if we hosted a party where the women had to pay to pamper us, it's, it's just a throwback. I mean, this is, this is uh, and, and I feel like what we're doing in this dialogue is to really try and bring back a, a sense of equanimity. Uh, there's that movie, uh, Koyana Squatsi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that. Life out of balance. And it seems like the pendulum has swung to the other side. It sure has. It sure has, Steve. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, uh, it's not as if we're having uh, seminars, parties, get together where we are equally learning to uh, pamper one another. And uh, uh, rather, it's, uh, you know, that party you were talking about is, uh, you know, a great example of what I was introduced to when I first came to Maui. Uh, there were uh, two goddesses that uh, I was uh, uh, very enamored with uh, for good reason, and uh, uh, I chose or we chose to uh, uh, create a relationship with uh, uh, a more exclusive relationship with the one, but I was cautioned um, by the other that uh, 
uh, it's very important to uh, not disturb the, uh, uh, the goddesses of Maui because uh, uh, it's a uh, coconut wireless and uh, uh, you know, the word will spread uh, very quickly. Now, it's not to say that uh, we human beings don't talk with one another, and it's not to say that when we meet someone new that we don't ask other people, gee, uh, what do you think about so-and-so? And all of that is well and good. What I'm referring to, rather, is the, uh, uh, the idea that, uh, hey, you better take, uh, you better do our bidding or else uh, we're not going to like it. And uh, that may seem uh, like a misinterpretation, but I tell you, Steve, that uh, uh, I've almost been told that uh, very directly. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, the thing is, is this is, uh, the beginnings of some rumblings that are happening. This could be very akin in a way to uh, the housewives in the 50s, 60s, beginning to have that conversation amongst themselves of wanting things to be different and women's lib and, and so forth. And I just want to really be clear that this is, these rumblings are going on in our community and I don't just hear this from men. I hear this from women as well, and it is something that uh, I feel like the purpose of talking about this is to really start a new dialogue between men and women where there can be uh, a dialogue, a give and a take. Because something really uh, funny that happened is that I, I, I called the hostess of this goddess party to uh, say to her that I felt a bit uncomfortable with just coming and paying and, you know, going from service station to service station, <laughs> <laughs> from service station to service station, <laughs> changing the oil, doing lube and filter, whatever, you know, whatever the pamperings were. And um, it, it, it felt out of balance. So what I was informed at that time was that, uh, well, Steve, uh, what I notice about you is that you're, you're always looking what you can receive in return. <laughs> that was the response. <laughs> As if that was somehow wrong or bad or, uh, you know, where you were being less than evolved. And certainly there is great joy in serving. Mm -hmm. And of certainly, uh, you know, we men enjoy uh, taking care of serving uh, uh, the, the, uh, the goddess. I love to. You know? Yeah. And, but at the same time, not just for you and I, but <clears throat> we've each uh, spoken to lots of the uh, men on Maui yes. who are going, Wait a second. Yeah. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's something going on here that uh, really is not terribly comfortable. Yes. I'll give you an, another example. Uh, to one uh, uh, angelic woman uh, that uh, I was talking to early on when uh, she was training me in how to uh, treat her, the uh, analogy of an ideal male-female relationship in the Age of Enlightenment is where the woman would be treated like the goddess and the man would row the boat and be the baggage carrier. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that uh, and sure enough, as the relationship evolved, uh, you know, I, I became the errand boy, and I mean, I'm 100% owning, you know, uh, my choices and mm -hmm. so forth, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, would uh, provide massage and so forth, and you know, kept waiting for there to be uh, more reciprocity, re more reciprocity, mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
But reciprocity never did uh, uh, fully unfold. Uh, uh, and uh, it kind of uh, showed me that uh, there is a new equation uh -huh. that uh, many of the women on Maui uh, are uh, wanting, and that is they certainly want the equality, mm -hmm. the male-female equality, but where the goddess is now formally uh, running the show and where the man is expected to be the devotee. Well, I, I have a name for uh, this book. Uh, the name of the book defining this culture that uh, we're talking about today is I'm okay and you're not and the subtext is groveling at the feet of the goddess. <laughs> and uh, I love it because it's based on that old book of I'm okay, you're okay. So I'm okay, you're not okay. And there is some of that going on. It's as if the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the women who had uh, the proverbial knee pads during the 50s, mm. you know, having to, uh, you know, serve their man, uh, uh, you know, bring him his dinner and uh, his six pack of beer, uh, uh, that uh, uh, now, and it's, you know, as if uh, the man is wearing his knee pads. And just like in the 50s, it was all about, you know, the male getting off in uh, lovemaking. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the woman uh, having a uh, sexuality was simply about turning the man on. It wasn't uh, focused on her own satisfaction. Right, or the man wasn't even concerned about turning the woman on at that point. It was just for his laying back and his gratification. Exactly. As long as the woman, uh, you know, really uh, was the fantasy uh, mm -hmm. that he was looking for and available mm -hmm. whenever he wanted. Mm -hmm. Now it is swung in the opposite direction where, and I may be exaggerating a bit, however, uh, with all too many women on Maui, where now it's about their satisfaction uh, in lovemaking and where uh, the man is expected not to get off, oh, yeah. uh, not to ejaculate, uh, mm. uh, tantra mm -hmm. being the uh, label, and not to say tantra doesn't have, you know, uh, I'm trained in tantra and certainly value what it's uh, given me. However, it's the man now, so to speak, wearing the knee pads. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, the woman on top, <laughs> uh, 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 much to most of the time. And where it's uh, almost a complete reversal yeah. of the uh, sexual uh, role-playing of the uh, of the 50s and here we are in the first decade of the 21st century now I say all that because what we really are looking for is to have role flexibility yes we don't want to switch from one role robotic set of behaviors to another uh, still sexist I like that robotic yeah, another set of robotic uh, mm -hmm. uh, behaviors that we need to develop the expectations that we're here to love and serve one another and to honor truly uh, the God, Goddess in each of us. Uh, and while there's lip service paid to that, certainly on the part of the Goddess community, nevertheless, what we're addressing here is the set of behavioral expectations mm -hmm that uh, don't seem to honor the prince, the king, uh, the god, uh, mm -hmm. in the male. Mm -hmm. It's almost a contemptuous sometimes, a contemptuousness. Uh, maybe a playing out of, uh, or a reaction formation to, understandably, uh, the uh, male chauvinism of the past. But God, let's not have another 5,000 years of female chauvinism. Absolutely. 
Yeah, I feel like it's really time to uh, equilibrate. Is that a word? Equilibrate. E yes, it's time to do that. Uh, I took a wonderful uh, seminar with uh, John Demartini, and that was what it was all about within ourselves to find that place, you know, not to keep playing out these polarities because I've known since I've been a young kid, I could sense that what we're really looking for is, is that. We're looking, you know, that's, that's been what's within me. I've never really wanted to have a one down, one up. Of course, it's, I mean, in truth, underneath it all, underneath these role plays, uh, that's what we really want uh, to have, uh, particularly in this great uh, uh, country of freedom and independence, you know, we want to have each of us shared as unique individuals. Uh, however, there's another aspect of the goddess culture that needs addressing. Uh -huh. And that is that when then the man uh, becomes rebellious as any uh, subservient, uh, subjugated uh, uh, species is going to, uh, and expresses uh, his irritability, irritation, indeed, after a time, anger, because there's been resentment accrued at complying, if it's strictly uh, a rigid role, then it's, my gosh, you know, that's how unevolved uh, that feeling is. Uh -huh. And then, of course, you're sent to uh, get trained in a whole series of uh, communication, nonviolent communication being one good example, and not that that isn't a wonderful training, uh, but where anger is uh, a not okay expression. And of course, I'm talking here about safe anger, not hostile anger.